Hello and welcome, welcome back to the channel. If you saw the last video, you'll see that I skipped an Oase Escape Line 90. Now today is going to be the planting, so I've just picked up um, a big batch of plants. These are all from uh, Tropica. Well, they're not from Tropica, but they are Tropica plants. So we've got a mix of one, two grow cups and also some immersed growth plants as well. Um, I will leave a plant description uh, in the comment section and I'll mention some of the plants that I'm using as well just in case anybody's interested. So I think all in all we've got about 30 to 35 plants here and I am going to be using a few of the epiphytes from the old scape as well. Um, so yeah this is the biggest tank I've ever planted um, so it was quite expensive to do all this like get all these plants. I've also got a rare trimming there of some Bacopa Caroliniana purple and I've also got some Seacom Advance because I'm going to be dosing that for the first 10 days. But first we've got to put on the light bracket. So in the last video um, I didn't have the light mounted. Well the brackets have come from Chihiros and these are really really nice. I'm really impressed with them. Um, it's like a brushed gunmetal silver almost. Um, they don't come with instructions but it was one of them things where I thought it was harder than it looked, but it was actually really easy to install these. You can install them two way ways, so you can either have the longer arm or the shorter arm, um, depending on like how big your tank is and how far you want the light above the water. So it is on. It was pretty tricky to do. This is a one-person thing, so yeah, I would definitely recommend getting some help if you're going to do it. I've also put the shades on the light, which make a big difference uh, to not being blinded. And the tank has actually been running um, for about five or six days now, um, obviously without a light on and without any CO2, just the filter. But yeah, now we've got the light on. Um, I think it's time to plant. I was going to leave it a little bit longer, but I was a little bit impatient. So yeah, it's about the five day mark. It did release a lot of ammonia. I had been doing water tests. Um, but yeah, I think it should be kind of okay now. It will have probably released the bulk of it. So I've drained the water down. And yeah, now it's just time to basically prep all of these plants. So I'm going to start in the bottom right hand side and down there it's going to be a sort of mix of carpet style and very sort of like low growing foreground plants. So we have like a mix of Starigyne, uh, the Pogostamin, we've got some Marsilia Minuta, which is like a smaller version of Hasuta. Um, and then te Helanthium tenulum green and then there's going to be some Eleocharis in the background like the slightly taller one and a little bit of Blixa, Blixa japonica as well mixed in with some um, Cryptocrine albeda brown so yeah it was just a case of getting in the zone and uh, just taking my time planting I think all in all it took about two hours to plant um, I've planted as densely as I possibly can um, I did end up buying a couple more pots um, of stems for the far left, but we'll we'll mention that later. But here is the, I can't remember if this is called, no, it's a Sicularis, sorry, it's Eleocharis Sicularis. So this is sort of like a, a slightly longer version of hair grass. And I'm hoping that planting that in the back is going to give the illusion of sort of distance because obviously it's like a, a thinner leafed plant. And here we've got the, tiger lotus i'm hoping that this is going to be sort of a star of the tank i do i do want the leaves to like grow up some people cut them and keep them short um so it's just like a, a, a cluster of sort of red lotus leaves but i do actually want mine to be able to like grow up and sort of float on the top of the water but you do kind of have to keep them in check because they can get really big and block out some of the light so as we've gone to the left, um, I've added some Anubias. This is from my other tank. I didn't want to add too much because it might melt. And then in the back, as we go across, we've got Rotala Bonsai. We've got Cryptocryne Becketii. We've got Rotala Orange. We've got Rotala Green. We've got Montevidensis in the back. Um, and I think we've got some Mariophyllum Matagrosensei as well. But I did, however, change the Mariophyllum to some Rotala Hatra. Um, I'm also going to add moss onto the branches but we're going to do that later because moss doesn't always do well in a new setup so I'm going to wait till it matures a little bit but that's weeping moss so I'm hoping it kind of droops down over the, the branches. So this is it filled um, and this is sort of like day one so I'm going to be running the light on about 30 to 40 percent for about six hours this is an extremely powerful light and this is the I think it's the 10th anniversary one as well so it's actually 40 percent more powerful than the original Chihiros Vivid 2 um so yeah it's a bit I'm a bit scared of it at the minute I'm not really sure um how 
how I should be running it but yeah it's a it's all a bit of a test really so this is it kind of uh, I think it's two days after when things had sort of settled down a little bit and the water had cleared this is it after a couple more days and I've added some trident fern from my old scape now it's not the healthiest trident fern so I may end up replacing it for something um, a little bit more healthy because right now it's not looking too good it looks all right here but it hasn't transitioned all that well and we're getting some diatom algae as well but it's kind of got that new tank freshness where everything just looks really nice and green and you think oh great uh yeah and then and then diatoms hit i was hoping they wouldn't given that i'd used an external filter that's already cycled but yeah we've got a little bit to deal with but never mind uh we've got the co2 running I can't tell you how many bubbles a second it is. It's just kind of getting blasted at the minute. There's no livestock in there. So I've just kind of turned it up. Um, but as you can see, all these foreground plants are looking really nice and green. There's some ranunculus in and datus, I think it's called, that's kind of just opened up there. I've never used this before, but it's almost like a little umbrella plant. I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't get too tall, um, but I might just have to trim it to keep it in check. Um, I don't want to add too much more in the way of epiphytes to the foreground. I really do want to keep that wood detail and even the moss I don't think I'm going to go crazy on. Um, and then I've just kind of been looking at it and seeing what else I can do and what else I can add to it. And I do think I want to add some more Anubius mini, mini coin into the foreground just to add a few more details. Obviously, it's got quite a it's quite shaded in the foreground or there's that big sort of deep cave, which... Uh, it's like this really dark point of the scape, which I love. I love the dramatic shadow. It is a nightmare for casting, uh, sort of, sorry, for reflections when you're trying to record. But It's now been about two weeks since planting. So I have now introduced the fish from the old scape back into the tank. And here is what it looks like now. So I'm just going to overlay some sort of cinematic footage. And yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And I will see you on the next one.